Now, the U.S. Labor Secretary Hilda Solis has resigned, becoming the fifth cabinet member to leave President Barack Obama's administration since his re-election. In a message, Salos, Solis pardon me, made, said she made the decision after discussing it with her family and close friends. The U.S. President thanked his Latina colleague for her tireless efforts. Solis is leaving the cabinet at a time when the U.S. jobless rate stands at nearly 8 percent. Her departure means that the Obama administration is losing another woman after the exits of the Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and the Environmental Protection Agency Administrator Lisa Jackson. Plus two other cabinet members, namely the Defense Secretary Leon Panetta and the Treasury Secretary Timothy Geithner, will not stay on in Obama's second term either. Well, to discuss that a bit further, we're now joined by Mike Raval, who is a former U.S. Senator, who is joining us now via Skype from San Francisco. Senator, thanks a lot for joining us. Now, uh, explain these uh, resignations, if you can, Senator. Is this normal at this point? Yes, it is normal. Um, generally, uh, most the uh, cabinet officers don't stay for eight years. Uh, they have a tendency or desire to get out after four years so that they can market themselves uh, politically and make a lot of money and uh, and lobby subtly with the uh, administration many times their assistants are promoted uh, so it, uh, what is a little unusual is the fact that so many are changing right during the month of january uh, but uh, but uh, this is pretty standard that uh, a number of officers would resign so that they could go back to the private sector and enrich themselves. Right. You know, there's been a lot of talk, uh, you know, Senator, online about uh, the Obama administration shifting its policies in Obama's second term. Um, just explain that to, to our audience. What exactly does that mean, and what are you foreseeing for the future? Well, first off, I don't see a shift in policy uh, I think with respect to, for, well, there is one shift. I want to take that back. There is one shift. I think if Hegel gets uh, appointed or confirmed by the Senate uh, for the Defense Department, I think that will be a, a plus from Iran's point of view, because I don't think he would uh, get involved in any plan to go to war with Iran. Uh, however, uh, from the balance of Hegel's uh, personality and experience, uh, he would be pretty much uh, politics as usual, maybe not as aggressive with American imperialism, uh, but, uh, but here, too, uh, he is a conventional politician and would support America first. Uh, the same thing with uh, John Kerry at the... Uh, State Department. I think that John Kerry may not be as aggressive. Now, Hegel's got another thing also, and this may be what uh, is on uh, the president's mind. Uh, Hegel would not be a, uh, a friend of Israel. Uh, he would not be an enemy, but he would certainly be a lot more circumspect with our relationship uh, with Israel. And so, there's two pluses for Hegel. Uh, Kerry would be more the same. The tragedy is that the, this new team is not going to change Obama's posture to speak of uh, with respect to American imperialism, but it could mean a plus with respect to Iran in a couple of instances. All right, we'll have to leave it there for now. That was Senator Mike Ravel, former U.S. Senator, speaking to us via Skype from San Francisco. Senator, as always, we appreciate your insight.